Regeltech is transforming the treatment of chronic low back pain caused by degenerative disc disease, which is a very large market in the United States and around the world. We have an experienced cross-functional team. They've been with me on three, most of them have been with me on three different startups. Percutaneous procedure, this is, we have excellent one and two year outcomes. Our early um, patients that we did in 2020 are just starting to get at three year outcomes. So we have really good clinical data out, out for a long time. We have a broad IP portfolio with perfection, protection at 2039. We are a breakthrough device, and we just had our IDE approved, our pivotal trial ready to go in the United States. Again, we have a really experienced cross-functional team that's been with many of us, um, a lot of exits between the team. Clinical advisory team, some of the top orthopedic surgeon, Pierce Nunley, Doug Beal, um, interventional radiology, Kaz Almer Dolphin, interventional pain, and Tom Shear was our animal doctor at the University of Pennsylvania's New Bolton Center. Hydrophil is our product. Hydrophil is a hydrogel made of common polymers, PVA, PVP, and PEG. It's very small amounts, mixed, um, really tight, with also a little bit of barium in it so we can watch it. You can watch it flow in. You can see it as you do follow-ups in one year, two year, three years. It's always going to be there, and you'll be able to see the barium when you do um, x-rays and CAT scans. We heat the gel up in the morning before the procedure um, using a steam sterilization process. We want to melt the gel so the gel is melted and can flow down 17 gauge needle that's about seven inches long. Um, the gel warms up to about 65 C when it goes down the needle about 55 C into the disc. So it flows in like a glue. We're doing an augmentation so we're not cleaning the nucleus out first. We're just augmenting what's still left in the nucleus. This will take place in, by an interventional radiologist or an interventional pain doctor, probably in an ambulatory care setting is where most of these will, will take place. It's a quick procedure. Patients usually go home in two and three hours. They walk out um, just getting prepped. The procedure itself is, is probably 15 to 20 minutes by the time the needle is in. The longest part about the procedure is getting the needle placed accurately under fluoro. Um, and then once the needle's put in, the gel goes in pretty quickly. I ah, wanted to go back. In the bottom over there, you'll see um, grade one through four in the left-hand side, grade five through six. This is the Fuhrman scale of degenerative disc disease. The white are well-hydrated discs, so those are good discs in grade one and two. As you can see, the white starts going away as you come down to grade three and four. Most of our patients will see in a little bit, but our sweet spot is four to eight. Um, when you get down to eight, they call them flat black discs. There's really nothing left. Most of those, once you get down to grade five and grade, grade through eight, there's not a lot left in the disc anymore. It's just a gray matter material. There's not a lot of vascularization at that point. And these patients are just suffering on a day-to-day -day basis. We think right now there's a, there's a treatment gap, and you know other people are working on things too for this because it's such a big market and treatment gap. Most of these patients are doing physical therapy, exercise. They're getting a lot of repeat multiple injections into the disc or into the epidural space, taking pain medications, a lot of opioids still with this patient population. And you know, to the far right is fusion, which really does not have a good success rate of relieving pain in these patients. It's good if there's instability in the spine, but not just for the pain relief in this patient population. Spinal cord stimulators are coming into play. They take the pain away, um, but they don't really support the spine or do anything. And then disc replacement, which is becoming very good in the cervical area, still is, is slow to pick up and very expensive in the lumbar area. We believe hydrophil will fit kind of in the middle between these. We don't eliminate going to fusion or any of the things on the right. Um, if ours works, it, it's great, and hopefully we can fend off any of the other invasive surgeries and long recoveries that go along with it. There's a very large patient population, 6.8 million patients are treated, are, are, in, are out there um, worldwide. The total addressable market for our product is uh, probably two to three billion dollars. We have great clinical data, like I said. We've done, we did two cohorts in Colombia during the uh, pandemic. We did 20, each cohort has 20 patients in it. As you can see, the levels treated mainly in the low back, L4, L5, L5S1, uh, L3, L4. The modified Fuhrman scale, again, most of the patients are in grade, grade four to grade eight, which is kind of our sweet spot on this, 
Um, we moved and started a uh, feasibility trial in uh, Canada, in Calgary, Canada, at a pain center um, with an interventional radiologist. And uh, we've done 20, 20 patients in our phase three, and we've a lot of learnings from our first two cohorts to the second two cohorts, and I'll go over there. But these are patients, the white is the, is the implant, and you can see the 30-day flexion. This is the same patient at 30 days and 180 days. You can see when they flex and they bend, how the gel kind of stays and moves with the patient in both of these at the same time. This is a six-month follow-up, and this is live x-ray, I think. I oh, wonder why it didn't move. It's supposed to move, but it's not moving. <laughs> All right, again, you can see this is the dual patient, um, L4, L5, and L5S1. You can see the white is our implant in that patient. This normally moves, but it's not moving right now. Patient satisfaction, how satisfied are you with the outcome of your procedure? As you can see, the green, the dark green and the light green add up in the 90% for all these patients. They're either very satisfied or satisfied with the procedure. ID, ODI by cohort. ODI is the um, scale of disability in these patients. You can see they start off with a very high disability rate, not being able to do much, walk, sit for any period of time. Out at 24 months with this patient population, we have a dramatic result drop. Also, NRS is pain score on a 1 to 10. These patients are starting with over a 7 on a 1 to 10 on a daily basis, and you can see how far down they've dropped on this at the same time. This is a patient by patient. So each line is a patient, and you can see how much we've had a reduction in ODI at one year and reduction in NRS scores at one year too. The key learnings, combining discography with MRI. These patients have fissures and they have tears in the annulus. The gel comes in like a glue, it runs in. If they have too large of a tear or too large of a fissure, the gel is going to run out of the annulus. We learned this in the first set of patients in, in Columbia. So we need to do a discography first. During discography, we inject a dye into the disc, and we want to see if that dye stays in place. So we're looking for an intact annulus for these patients. We want the dye to stay in place on that, and then we know. Usually this procedure is done about a week to two weeks ahead of time. We also learned with our device has three mLs of gel in it that implanting one to one and a half cc's of gel is just as good as implanting three cc's of gel for pain relief. So we've learned with those patients and we get less amount of um, pressure in the disc and less amount of gel kind of moving out or migrating out of the disc. Um, we also learned that we need our patients to stay still because the gel is still setting up as you get down to body temperatures when the gel sets up and because one, becomes one large mass. Remember, we're melting it and we're melting it, it goes down the, the needle into the disc, and then it needs time to get down to body temperature, and then it sets back into one large mask in the disc like you saw on the x-rays before. When we have had problems in the first 20 patients, when we weren't doing um, discographies first, we did have some patients that needed some of the gel removed because it came out into the space posteriorly and was causing the leg pain, but we learned that it can easily be removed with an endoscopic, like an endoscopic discovery, discography procedure, and we can take that out, and the patients are all doing great today. We did recently get our pivotal trial approved. Um, it's a single dual level patients with chronic low back pain for six months due to degenerative disc disease with firm in grades four to eight, 225 patients blinded, randomizing two to one, so Two patients, every two patients will get hydrophil, one patient won't. Uh, it's a needle prick for the con and conservative care for the blinded group. Responder analysis of a composite endpoint, including a 15% reduction in ODI, which is standard with the FDA, freedom from device, and procedure rated SAEs and SSIs. Um, we don't want either group to have a lot of injections or increased opioid medications. We don't have any injections within 45 days of the final endpoint, and freedom from gel extravasation causing mild stenosis. We've raised $16 million to date. Um, we still have about $3 million in the bank. Our average burn is about $300,000 a month. And to do the trial in the US, it's gonna run us about $25 million. 
We expect to finish that financing by the end of this year and start the pivotal trial early um, in, in Q1 of 2024. We'll have the one-year follow-up on all these patients um, is the milestone to get the one-year follow-up on all the patients. PMA submitted to the FDA. We expect also to have CE mark in Q1 of 2024. We've submitted our dossier. It's been in for about six months so far. We've got some clinical questions. We've answered those, but we expect CE mark very soon. Thanks.